All right, so Notion for marketers basics. I'll show you how to briefly use Notion for the beginners and show you how you can create databases and just the little basics that'll help you get going on Notion. So first of all, I just want to mention that Notion was created to have a very flexible approach to your marketing needs or to your workspace needs. And the way it's built is that if you need something, then you can you can add it. If you don't need something, then it won't be there. And that makes it very powerful because it eliminates any distraction that you won't necessarily need. Big companies like uh, Pixar, Nike, Spotify, Slack, a lot of these companies use Notion. They have teams that use Notion. I wanna show you how you can also use Notion for your needs, whether you're a small business or a big business. Now. Let's start off with the notion of blocks. So a block is basically any of these right here. And you add a block by hitting the slash button or clicking the plus button. And you can add new blocks, empty blocks by hitting enter. So as you can see, every time there's a little six dots and the plus, that means there's a block here. So let's just select them so you can see them. These are all the blocks on the page right now. If I delete them, then there's nothing. When you have an empty page, which is what we have right now, you'll have options. But as soon as you click something or hit enter, then it won't be there anymore. Now, these little blocks, let's add a heading, for example. These blocks can be turned into other things. So let's say I want to turn it now into a bullet, into a bullet point. So I'll just choose bullet and it's now a bullet. Let's say now I want to change it back into a header, but a header two instead of one. There we go. Now it's a header two. Let's say I want to turn it into a call out. You can do that. Call outs are just blocks with icons, which help you explain things easily when you're making an, an overview or when you're showing something or explaining something. And it's very helpful to have that. And also you can change the colors. So let's change it to green. And note that you can change the color of a block, but also of text. So let's change this into, let's say, blue. And there we go, we have, sorry about that. Then you have blue, a blue color. But you see why it didn't work when I did it the first time is because I chose a blue background. But there's blue background and there's just blue as the text color. So that's that. Now, I wanna show you how you can add a table. So this is a simple table, just like in Excel, for example. And you can choose to add a header and also for a row. So for a header for row or for the column. So this would be, for example, names. And then here you'd have number. Here you'd have, for example, tags and company. Now, here, for example, let's say you have uh, Nike, and here we have Adidas, and here you can have number 12, 3, company, Nike.com, Adidas.com. Okay, now, shoes, and let's just do something else, let's say a jacket. It's a wrong example, but <laughs> you understand. Now. You can choose to make it as large as the whole page by clicking this little uh, arrow button, or you can make it just like it was before. Actually, you can't. <laughs> but let's say you do undo just to bring it back, and you can keep adding rows with this plus button and this plus button for the for the rows and for the columns. Now, if you want to switch a column somewhere else, you just drag it and put it somewhere else. Uh, another thing also is that you can change this into a database. So a table is not the same thing as a table database. Let's see what a table database looks like. And as you can see, table data databases need names. So you need to give it a name, database one, delete, just call it delete. So that way I remember I have to delete it. And as you can see, this, this database, you can do a lot of things with it. So you can either search in it. So let's say I'm searching for Nike. There we go. So I'm searching for 12. There you go. And let's say I'm looking for only jackets. Oh, there we go. I, I misspelled the word jacket here. Okay, so then if you wanna open it as a page, you can do that here. And now there's nothing else you can do here, but just simply the page of the database. 
we'll go back to the original page here. Um, now you can either lock your database so that people can't edit anything. So you can't change anything in the header, but you can add things if you want. You see, you can add things here. And you can also, let's, let's unlock it though. Let's unlock it from here. And you can also change the properties from here. So these columns, you can add them also from here. So add a new property, say uh, person. There you go. Let's change the property type to a person. Now you can add someone right here. You can add, for example, um, okay, it won't let me do anything here. Let's delete this row. And let's add another person here. And there we go. Now, these different rows, every row is basically a page. So let's open Nike's page. As you can see, I can add a lot of information here. I can add, for example, uh, information about their company, I can add any anything I, I really need. And you can also comment on the page. So let's say this is a projects page, a projects database, and you want to do things like, for example, calculate how much money you're making with them. So let's put here 3,000, 30,000, and 45,000. And you can also do a sum. So you can count all or you could do a sum, but as you can see, you can't do that here because this is text. So what you want to do is change this into a number property. And now you can add the sum or an average as you'd like. Um, next, I want to show you the checkbox. So the checkbox is basically just a checkbox. And the checkbox is special because you can make it as small as you'd like. They're the ones you can't, as you can see. But if you really want to make something really small, because for example, it's only numbers, let's say this is just numbers like this, and you want to do numbers here, then all you have to do is create a, well, change it into a checkbox, make it smaller, change it back into a number. And there we go. Now, what if you want to filter things in here? Because this is the most powerful feature that you can have in a database. So filtering lets you filter for any column that you have here. So let's say you want to filter for only shoes. So let's choose tags that contains the word shoes. Now it's showing you only things that have the tag shoes. Let's say you want to filter for stuff for only jackets. And there you go. You want to filter for only Megan. For only, uh, actually you have to change this to the person. So it contains, and it'll show you. So let's choose this. And there we go. Now, let's say you want to add different, um, different filters. You can have, you can add a lot of different filters at once. So if you want to do only, show only uh, rows that contain number one equals number one or is bigger or smaller than number one. And also that are uh, created that have the person Megan, for example, then you can choose anything here with your, with your filter. But right now there's not much information, so it's not really useful. But in the next video, I'll be showing you how to create a page for a, for a project database and also a client database and interlink them and show how you sort and filter them the way you want. So enough of this. I'll show you now how the views work. You can create different views, which are boards, timelines, calendars, lists, or galleries. So let's choose a board. Create. Now, if you want to get back to your other table, then you can just click here and click back to board. Now the board view lets you drag things. So let's say I want to drag, for example, this page and put it here. So as you, you can remember, this had the column Jeremy in it, but now it doesn't anymore. See, now you see it's right here, Adidas in the back, but let's say I change it back to Jeremy and remove 
this one you see it's not here anymore it went back here so by changing this oof, by changing this it also changes the properties so let's say i put it here in no person then it'll simply remove it entirely you see it's, there's no one here anymore you can choose how you want to see your boards so you go into the settings and you choose group and then you want to group by person or you can group by by whatever you want so right now it's grouped by person but i can also group by checkbox so it's going to show you the ones that are checked and the ones that are not checked so let's uncheck this see now it goes here let's uncheck this as well now it's here check 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 they go here now this is a very powerful feature because it helps you change different properties without actually going inside the page um and i want to show you also different types of views so there's also the calendar view which lets you add things directly from a calendar when you add something it'll give it a date automatically and you can also have it show different things so let's see here i wanted to show all show all the information on the calendar so you see it's showing me that it's unchecked i can check it it's showing me the name it's showing me this it's showing me everything let's add a person also to this so add myself and then add a number 70 okay and then a tag uh go let's choose multi-select Okay, let's add another tag to, and I don't know, and let's change the colors. So as you can see, I'm changing these colors here, but you can also do the same thing within the property in the table. Now let's go back here. As you can see, it's showing me all the information, but let's say I don't want it to show me these different tags. So I'll just go here in properties and remove this and you can't see it anymore. I don't want it to show my name, the person, remove this. So whatever you want it to show, it'll show. And these other types of databases, I won't go into them, um, but they're very useful for specific things. I'll go into them later when I create specific databases that need them. And that's that. Now, I wanna show you something very cool in Notion, which is the sync block. Sync block is basically a block that's synced across different pages. So let's say, for example, menu item one, menu item two, and menu item three. Now I want to copy this and I want to paste it here. Now, as you can see, if I add another item, it's adding it also over there. Now, you can have as many as you'd like. So you can add one like this in every page and have it be, for example, uh, a, a, a footer and also a header for the page. Uh, so in the header, you could have, it could be a navigation bar, for example. So let's say I wanna link it to something. So I'll select it, click link. Then I could either paste a link that will go anywhere else. So it could go to nike.com, it could go to my website, go wherever you want. Or it could go, for example, to a page that's here. So let's go to, for example, Notion for marketers. And as you can see, this will bring me back to this page where we're already at. And let's say now I want to go to, to Nike, for example. So let's actually change this to Nike. Now this I select this and write Nike. And there we go. Now, if I hit this, it'll bring me to the Nike page that we created earlier, the row of this database. No, oh, it's not here. It's right here, as you can see. But remember, we had a filter. We'll remove these filters from here so we can see everything. Now, these menu items are really cool because as you can see here i have the menu as well and i can also add this menu by copying it and putting it anywhere else i can put it in another page i could add it to the nike page for example right here and wherever it actually i chose the wrong option and you click it copy it from here and then when you go inside you can simply paste it There we go. Now, 
if you want to unsync something, you simply unsync it. But I'll show you in the other page so it's it's more visual. So let's unsync this. Now, this unsyncs everything, as you can see. But let's say I don't want to unsync it all. So I'll just um, turn it into a sync block. And now I'm copy it, paste it here. And I want to unsync this one. Unsync. As you can see, this one is still synced. So if I add another one here, it's still synced, but this one is not. So if I add anything here, it won't. But if I do it here, it does. Now, I want to show you that you can do anything as a sync block. So if I want to add a sync block here, for example, I can also add a sync block right here. Uh, let's just sync block. And now I'll add this into here. Now, if I want to copy this and put it somewhere else, and there we go. Now I'll add a new row, for example, I don't know. Go, and there we go. It's adding it here as well. I'll add it, go, there we go. And to be honest, this saves a lot of time because when you're creating, for example, a template or a procedure or something, and uh, a lot of things have similar or things in common, then you don't have to change it in every page. You'll just change it in that page. Like for example, is instructions or menu bars like I just created earlier. Um, and that's pretty much it for this video. I wanted to show you the basics and that's what I've shown you. And next time I'll be showing you other options uh, in, the, in the projects database that I'll be creating. And you'll see all the different things that you can do in a real life situation. So I hope you guys like this video and let me know in the comments if you want any specifics on Notion or anything you want to know in, in general.